So hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going over the entire history of Jimmy Hopkins, from his earliest concept designs to his final appearance and everything we can fit in between, such as his appearances in pre-release material and, you know, stuff like that. I can't believe it's taken this long for me to actually get around to making a full in-depth video on this, but anyway, let's get on with the early concepts. So one of the earliest known concepts of Jimmy actually stems from one of the very few only images of a cancelled Rockstar Games art book called Digital and Analog, The Art and Science of Rockstar Games, which was supposed to be a free book collection announced in July 2010 and would have showcased a plethora of artworks explaining Rockstar's game design process from all of Rockstar's games. This book set, or whatever the right term is, actually would have came alongside a CD loaded with exclusive content. Now, this book sadly never came to be and was cut entirely, but only two images of it remain online. One is of the art book's cover, which is not really that interesting because it's pretty blank, but the second one is much more interesting because it shows what looks to be a very, very early bully concept. With a much different looking logo, which looks much more childlike, and art of what appears to be a much younger version of Jimmy Hopkins wielding a water gun. Even though this image is really low quality, it tells us an awful lot about Rockstar's plans for Bully, as the logo does look much more childlike as mentioned, and Jimmy looks like a literal toddler here. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, how do we know this is Jimmy and not some random character? Well, judging from the actual image itself, if we look at the face, we can see some kind of resemblance to Jimmy's final artwork signs, and we'll get onto those in a moment. Now, while not related to just Jimmy, it does imply that Bully may have been about primary or even elementary school kids during its earliest concept before they decided to move it to a high school-like setting. Now, in some later concepts for Jimmy, we can see he does appear to be a bit younger, and this kind of remains in his comic concept arts as well. Especially the special edition comic, where he looks much younger and a bit less stocky too. I wouldn't say he looks like he does in his final artworks, but to me he looks about maybe 11, 10 years old here. But it's also worth mentioning this special edition comic also has the Tyler Wilson concept character appearances for characters like Ernest Jones and Peanut 2, which look much more exaggerated, so this implies that this comic was designed either around the time that these designs were being used, or the actual designs for the characters were a bit of a late change. Now one bit of artwork featured in the final game is also really interesting, because in one of the game's loading screens we can see Ms Peabody pulling a blonde haired boy by his ear, and despite popular belief, this is actually Jimmy Hopkins, it's not Trent Northwick like many people assume. Because if you look at the face of Jimmy in any other artwork, you'll see a lot of similarities with the face in this artwork, such as the reddish nose and ears, the round face, and the eyebrows which have that kind of angry look to them. Now why this is interesting is because of the blonde hair, because it's impossible for Jimmy to get any kind of actual blonde hair in the final game, as Jimmy is just limited to black and ginger styles basically. But as you'll see later on in the video, Jimmy was going to have the option to have actual blonde hair. And it's also worth mentioning that quite a lot of Bully's loading screens also do use beta designs, such as Russell who has the beta Bully vest, which is also similar to the one that's worn by Jimmy in the final game, Pinky who has no diamond vest, and this artwork of an unknown non-click student with a blue sweater and Gloria. So it's not really that far-fetched to believe that this was just an early design of Jimmy when he actually did have the option to go fully blonde. So let's get on to the in-game renders now. The very first design for Jimmy that was shown to the public was at May 2005 at E3, when Rockstar announced Bully officially because they showed off one image of Jimmy that's pretty well known in the community as it is, because it shows the earliest known in-game render of Jimmy and we can see his head looks much more low poly here, his bulwark vest has no logo, even though we do know from a 2002 concept that were leaked in 2019, and the Tyler Wilson concept from 2005, there was a logo for Bullworth Academy designed at the time. Jimmy also appears a bit thinner here, and his uniform has been changed from beige slacks to black slacks, and his trainers now replaced with brown shoes. Also note the pose, because Jimmy never has a pose like this in the final game, but admittedly it could be a promotional thing to give Jimmy a more menacing look, because if the screenshot looks something like this, it really wouldn't look that menacing at all. The second image of Bully that was released shows Jimmy with a watch, which is obtainable in the final game. Now, most of you might be thinking, that's just character customization. What about it? Well, likely it might not have been, because Bully originally had GTA Vice City like customization, which we'll go over a bit more later. And this watch also does feature in a few other promotional screenshots, such as the Beta Dawn one, and one that shows the aftermath of Jimmy giving the swirly to a student. Now this one was actually taken a bit later, because you might notice Jimmy now has a ball with crest, but it's incredibly low quality and stretched a bit. And a bit like the watch, the low quality stretched crest does make recurring appearances throughout other promotional screenshots, and looks its absolute worst in this. 
Now the next outfit change for Jimmy has him wearing his jeans instead of slacks, but still keeping the brown boots, and this outfit and Jimmy's might look familiar. Because if you've ever downloaded a Jimmy mod for a different game, he typically has this outfit, excluding the watch of course. Because this model is still found in the game files. And earlier I mentioned about Bully having GTA by City like outfits instead of a wardrobe, and this is one of the remains of that, as this outfit alongside many others still exists as pedestrian models in the files. And it's also why so many Bully mods for other games use this model, because it's actually really easy to find. This outfit did remain for quite some time, as it still made frequent appearances in other pre-release screenshots before being changed to the one we know of in the final trailer. So now let's get onto something incredibly interesting, and that is Jimmy's original voice. Because for some really weird reason there are two very small snippets of Jimmy's original voice actor before Jerry Rosenfall voiced him. And these files are unused Boys Dom ambient files, and we know it's Jimmy because they're very early recordings of the Welcome to Bullworth intro and the Race to the Vale cutscene. Take a listen. The second bit of Jimmy's original voice can be heard slightly without modding, in any mission that involves fire, so this can be the gym is burning or the tenement's errand for the cop. Because if Jimmy stands in the fire, he'll start coughing in a voice that sounds nothing like Jerry's. And interestingly, these files have one of Jimmy coughing and gasping for help like he's being choked, which do go unused. Have another listen. <coughs> help! <coughs> help! Oh, help! And finally, we have what is possibly the only remains of an actual in-game mission file, which is actually much higher quality, I guess you could say, and much clearer to hear. Likely from Welcome to Bullworth. Alright, I guess I better get changed. It's never been officially confirmed who voiced Jimmy before Jerry Rosenfall did, but it's hardly assumed it was Daniel Zajic, who did the motion capture work for Jimmy during the cutscenes, and apparently was changed because they felt this voice didn't actually suit Jimmy. So let's get on to character customization, because originally Jimmy Hopkins was not going to be as customizable as he is in the final game. Instead, Buddy initially took the GTA Vice City approach where he could only choose from a select amount of outfits for Jimmy, no customizing individual parts. There's a few left over of these, as the original outfits are actually just NPC models and cannot be spawned no matter what. Well, most of them are. But pretty much all the outfits are still used in the final game. Just a bit different model-wise, if that makes sense. I'll explain a bit on that later, but yeah. If you're wondering what outfits Jimmy would have had to choose from, these would have been school uniform, the starting outfit, Halloween outfit, wrestling, asylum orderly, and the mascot, without the head. Now, in the game files, these are referred to as player while the actual final model names are abbreviated with underscore SP and split into different parts, like, for example, Jimmy's head, if he has like a mask or something, his torso, and the trousers, you get the point. But some of these outfits do have slightly earlier designs too. Now, in the game's text files, there are strings saying that you could save up to four different custom outfits, but of course, this was reduced down to one in the final release. Now, interestingly, you can still spawn two of Jimmy's beta models as pedestrians, but they have no voice lines or do anything and don't react to anything whatsoever, they just stand there doing absolutely nothing. Now, another thing that was customised what about Jimmy, but was never initially planned at all, was Jimmy being bisexual, because according to Jacob Karap, he suggested giving the player the freedom to kiss boys alongside girls if the player really wanted to. But initially, nobody cared for it. It wasn't because there's any objections to LGBT content, they just wanted to get the bigger stuff done for the game first. And when Buddy was a bit closer to completion, Jacob brought it up again, and the team had no objections to it whatsoever and they made it work because they found most of Jimmy's kissing and gift giving lines weren't actually gender specific. And in a way, this saved some other characters from cut content, as you never hear any NPC dialogue after kissing girls, even though you might find them going around the map doing so, and some boys like Trent, Cornelius and Duncan are never seen kissing or flirting with girls anyway. John Barrier also had zero objections to Jimmy being bisexual, because during an interview with 1UP, he even stated he liked the addition because they wanted the player to have as many choices as they wanted to with Jimmy, even if his preferences had no impact on the story whatsoever. So now we get on to some unused clothes and hairstyles. And let's begin with Jimmy's starting outfit, as while Jimmy did start the game with a brown jacket, initially the jacket was much more darker and hoodie-like, actually resembling a similar clothing item found in GTA San Andreas, specifically the hooded jacket. And Jimmy's jeans were also much lower quality, which implies to me they might have been borrowed from GTA San Andreas as a temporary kind of thing. There's also a fair amount of unused clothes for Jimmy that were going to be unlockables initially, and some of these include, um, well, one of the rewards Jimmy would have unlocked after Panty Raid would have been a pair of pink girls underwear he'd wear over his head. 
Another award is the underwear trousers, which is just Jimmy's default jeans but with a pair of tighty whities over them. And these would have been given to Jimmy upon doing 100 wedgies. Now on the Xbox 360 version there is a wedgie related achievement, but it's only to do 50 of them and you get 25 gamer score, there's no actual in-game rewards. Jimmy was also originally going to have an Asylum Mask be an unlockable. It's likely this would have been unlocked either after beating one of the Asylum missions, or more likely doing the errand for Gregory after um, finding Johnny Vincent. Now for some really weird reason there's a few outfits for Jimmy that he only gets on the Nintendo Wii versions of the game. These being the Panda outfit and the Racing outfit. Now both of these still exist in the files on the PC and Xbox and the racing one is actually called NASCAR and these can be modded back in but on the Wii versions of the game they can be unlocked by beating Geography Class but it's unknown why they don't actually appear in the um, well PC or Xbox versions or Anniversary Edition. Pretty much most of the other unused clothes are just earlier designs of the carnival stuff Jimmy can buy. These being Angel Band, Devil Horns, the Strange Hat, the Dart Hat, I'm with Stupid, the Checkered Hat which isn't checkered at all. And there's also a blue version of the Aquaberry shirt which is, um, you know, the buttoned up one. So for haircuts there are at least four unused different hairstyles Jimmy could have. Most of them do stick to the typical four colours we get in the final version. However interestingly instead of chocolate, chestnut, copper and auburn of the colours that we're sort of stuck to, the textures for these are black, blonde, brown and red. Now earlier I mentioned about how Jimmy had the option to go more of a proper blonde rather than whatever the final cut says, but the textures do look a bit more blondish if you know what I mean, like more traditional blonde. So make of that what you will. Anyway, the four scrapped haircuts are curly, neat, tussled and a mohawk. And with a mohawk, Jimmy would have had much more colours to choose from, with the mohawk exclusive colours being black, brown, pink, purple, red and green. Which pretty much implies to me that this one was definitely going to be at the final cut, given Jimmy can also have some other punky looking hairstyles with more colours to choose from. I don't know where the other haircuts would have been um, picked up from, maybe like um, my best bet is maybe Neat would have been found at um, say the Ball of Fire one, but yeah. And finally let's get on to the sort of big change between PS2 Jimmy and Scholarship or Anniversary Edition Jimmy, because well, if you look at them both you can tell Jimmy had a bit of a facelift from the original to the sort of remasters. As I find this is a bit of a double edged sword. As here in Scholarship Edition and Anniversary Edition, Jimmy had a bit of a major face overhaul with a slightly bigger head and some minor adjustments to his eyes and nose, making him less look like he's sucking a lemon like he did on the PS2 versions. I'm not sure if you can consider this cut content because of, you know, the fact it's still in the final game, but yeah. So that about wraps up near enough everything I could find about beta Jimmy's appearances from his concepts to his final release. And that's it for today's video I guess, so thank you for watching and have a great day, and let me know what you think about this down below.